tonight. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles, if you will, and turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 16. Yeah, Matthew chapter 16. Oh, hopefully you're staying sweet. Amen. 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 I don't have a lemon tonight. I don't have any apple cider vinegar. Praise Amen. the Lord. And uh, stay sweet. And uh, oh, the Lord is good. Normally you see scribes and Pharisees. Tonight you're going to see Pharisees and Sadducees together. Pharisees and Sadducees don't normally get along. Uh, the Pharisees normally add to the scriptures. The Sadducees normally take away from the scriptures. And normally they're battling each other. But tonight they get together in Matthew chapter 16. They begin to go after the Lord Jesus Christ. And they begin to tempt him. They uh, desire that they, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ would show them a miracle. But really... They don't really care about the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, listen to me. They, they don't really care about Jesus. They're not trying to please Jesus. They're not trying to get along with Jesus. They're trying to manipulate the situation here. And uh, it's very, very, very important for us to see these scribes and Pharisees. They're coming after Jesus. And it's interesting. Jesus looks at them. And he answers their question in a unique way, and it's done. They begin to go north across the Sea of Galilee. We're going to read this in a moment. They get to the other side. They're about to go to Philippi Caesarea. If you remember that, the, almost the northern part of Jesus' ministry. And that's where uh, Peter says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's later on in this chapter. But they're on, I'll go in that direction. And Jesus begins to refer back to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he makes a statement to the disciples. And the disciples had forgotten to take bread. And they didn't understand what Jesus was saying. They got confused. And you see it again. Jesus looks at them and begins to say, Why are you confused about that? Don't you understand what I said? Let's read it. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. In the midst of it, or at the end of it, you're going to see Jesus ask a question. And he's asking a question. I'll say the question. We'll read it. But he says, how is it that you do not understand? How is it that you do not understand? We're going to start by reading verse number 1. We'll read every other verse until we get to verse number 12. I'll read verse number 1. The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Now, stop right there. Scribe, not scribes, Pharisees and Sadducees. Not the scribes and Pharisees, but the Pharisees and Sadducees. They came to him not really desiring to please the Lord, did they? No, sir. They came there to tempt him, to trick him, to manipulate the situation. And Jesus departed from them. And now it's going to turn over. Look at verse number 5. We're going to read verses 5 through 12. I'll start on verse 5. And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread, which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves, because ye have brought no bread? Do ye not yet understand, neither remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets ye took up? Neither the seven loaves of the four thousand, and how many baskets ye took up? How is it that ye do not understand that I spake it not to you concerning bread, that ye should beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees? Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. You see, Jesus was trying to explain a great truth to the disciples. That's a good thing. And as he explained this truth, 
they didn't get it. They didn't listen well enough. They didn't understand. They were confused. And Jesus said those words, do ye not yet understand? Then he said, how is it that you do not understand? And sometimes the Lord would like us to have a truth. He would like to teach us a lesson. Sometimes we are those disciples who get confused. And Jesus, sometimes I can see him looking at you and me and saying, how is it that you do not understand? And we're going to get a little bit later on in the sermon. I'm going to give us some in encouragement and maybe some ways that we can understand what the Lord is trying to tell us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. You're a merciful God. You treat us better than we deserve to be treated. What a wonderful night we have here at the church. We have the freedom to come, gather around your word, sing songs, hear songs sung that glorify you, Lord. I pray that you help the preaching tonight glorify you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you help us. Sometimes we don't understand what you want us to understand, and I believe it's our fault. Lord, I pray that you help us to learn something that will help our church, the families of the church, and us as individuals please you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Uh, interesting people. The Pharisees added to the law. They would add to the Word of God. They created what eventually they called the Talmud, which was a whole lot more as the oral law that added to the Scriptures. The Sadducees, they didn't even believe in a resurrection. They would diminish from the Scriptures. These two groups getting together... Oh, it doesn't make sense other than they were trying to get it. Have you ever heard the song about the Sadducees and the Pharisees? Yes, sir. Yes, Been sir. looking for a reason to sing for a while. And uh, so I have broken out of my repertoire, a uh, song about the Pharisees and uh, uh, the Sadducees. You know, um, oh, now I forgot it. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Living a life of heresy. I don't want to be a Pharisee. You ever heard that? The Sadducees? I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Because a Sadducee is sad, you see. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Now, you'll sing that tomorrow, and I'll praise the Lord. Uh, if not, if you need some help, and uh, I'll sing that again for you. Uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, they came to Jesus. They began to team up together. And Jesus had done miracles, healed people, fed 4,000, fed 5,000. The Lord Jesus Christ healed the, the lame and he caused the blind to see. He was a miracle worker. They really didn't need another sign. They came here in doubt. They wanted to tempt the Lord. And you think about it, number one, this is point one, the Pharisees and Sadducees didn't care what the Lord wanted. We're going to get a little bit later on and remember that question. How is it that you do not understand? You're going to know the Pharisees didn't even care to understand. They didn't care about the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't love the Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't care about the great God uh, of the Bible. They didn't care about uh, to please the Lord Jesus Christ. Can we understand that? The Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't care what the Lord wanted. The number two, the disciples were a little bit different. The disciples, they, they cared for the Lord. They loved the Lord, but they were confused about what the Lord wanted. Look back with me at verse number five, and it says, and when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Now stop with me for a second. That's not abnormal for the disciples. Boy, they're following the Lord, and sometimes so much is happening. Uh, somebody getting healed, the multitude's coming. They get so excited about the works that the Lord is doing. The last thing on their mind is to bring water or get anything to drink. But the Lord's always taking care of them. Remember the feeding of the 4,000. Remember the feeding of the 5,000. Remember that the Lord actually allowed them to have baskets full left of food. God always provides. He is a God that will supply all our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But at this point, it was sort of a habit. They forgot to take bread. And that's an important statement uh, for later on. And it says, And Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Now the disciples listened, take heed, 
And beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Maybe he's getting on to us that we were supposed to bring bread and we forgot bread. Oh, I did it again. We forgot bread. Disciples, we forgot bread. He's reminding us that we forgot bread. Can you obviously see they're confused here? You can see that. And they reason among themselves saying it's because we have no bread. Which when Jesus perceived, that's verse number eight, which when Jesus perceived, he said to them, oh, you have little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves because ye have brought no bread? Now, it's interesting. Jesus is trying to instruct them, and they're not hearing it. They're trying to instruct them, giving an important truth, maybe a life-changing truth, and they're confused about it. Okay, maybe that doesn't work with you. Uh, I've got kids. <laughs> Amen. Kids, I've got a job for you. This happened this last week, and I said, I want you to work over here in this part of the house, and I want you to work as a team, and here's exactly what you're going to do. And I said everything, and uh, a couple hours later, I looked out, and I noticed that a couple of my boys were not in the house. They were not doing what I told them to do, and uh, they'd come and told me, Dad, Dad, you'll be so proud of us. We were doing this and so and so. And that couple hours later, when I checked into what they were doing, so and so, they were doing a good thing, but they weren't doing what I wanted them to do. And I said, boys, did I not tell you what I wanted you to do? Did you not hear what I was saying to you? And by the way, I almost quoted this. How is it that you do not understand what I was describing to you? Can I get a witness from some parents? Amen. Some of you younger ones will be parents one day, and this message will make a whole lot more sense to you. How is it, children, that you do not understand? And that's what the disciples, they, they did not understand. And Jesus questions them, how do you not understand? Just say that phrase with me. How is it that you do not understand? One more time. How is it that you do not understand? Okay. We would all agree that the Lord wants us to follow his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. We see that we ought to be doers of the word and not hearers only. There'll come a time when some, they die, they stand before God, and God will look at them and say, Lord, say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name done many wonderful, marvelous works. Depart from me, I never knew you into everlasting fire. And you can almost see some people say, but why, Lord, didn't I follow your word? Didn't I? And you can see Jesus said, well, you didn't understand. I gave you specific instructions. I told you exactly what I, I wanted you to do. But Lord, I was confused. By the way, confusion at that point is too late. You have no good excuse. Well, Lord, I didn't understand. Understand, that's not a good excuse. Now, that's hard, but it's true. That excuse, I just did not understand, is not going to be a good enough excuse. So listen to me. How is it that you do not understand? First of all, there's going to be a group of people that do not understand because they just don't care. Can you understand that? There's going to be a group of people that don't understand what the Lord wants or the Lord's teaching, the Lord's desires. Why? Because they just don't care. By the way, can I just say that I don't want to be in that group? Amen. How many of you want to be in that group? Yeah, two or three of you, and so praise the Lord. Uh, by the end of the sermon, hopefully you get right with the Lord. I don't want to be a part of that group. How is it that you do not understand? Some just don't care. This is very bad. This is very bad. This is just very bad. When you go soul winning, you see it all the time. You'll knock on a door, and somebody will be in there playing their video game or doing something, and you'll say, hey, can I take a moment of your time? And if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you'd go to heaven? No. Can I show you from the Bible? No. I'm in the middle of a video game. And really, in truth, what they're saying is they just don't care. And many people throughout history have not cared about the God of the Bible until it's too late. And I don't want to be a part of that group. Do you not understand? Boy, uh, the important guy I put on here. Uh, sometimes you'll go and try to tell the important guy, the person that's successful this side of eternity, he's not all the time, but sometimes, and you say, let me show you what the Bible says. Let me show you the Bible way to heaven. And they'll give you that look like, you're going to give me what? Don't you know who I am? Don't you know who I am? I'm the important guy around here. But important guy is going to one day have to stand before God. 
and that is not a good excuse. I just don't care. Uh, the cool guy, the cool guy. Cool guy. You tell the cool guy about the Lord, and ah, don't you understand, I'm cool guy. And cool guy sometimes, but by the way, cool guy one day will have to stand before God. And uh, that is a bad place to be. I don't understand because I just don't care. The, uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were the religious guys. They thought they had it all figured out. The Pharisees thought they knew it all. They, they knew more than the scriptures. The Sadducees, they didn't believe the scriptures. They took away from the scriptures, but they were religious. And a lot, often you've got to be careful if we're in that boat right there. I know more than what the Bible says, and I don't care what the Bible says. That's a very dangerous spot to be. And so you think, how is it that you do not understand? Some just do not care. This is bad. But number two, some don't, don't care or understand. How is it that you do not understand? I don't understand because I didn't listen. Now, I'm not saying the disciples didn't listen. They did listen. But some people don't understand because they haven't listened. The disciples were not guilty of this. They listened. Uh, but sometimes people choose not to listen to the Word of God. And we think of that. I, I, I think about people who choose not to go to church. Amen? You think about they, they choose not to hear the preaching of God's Word. Uh, we think about people that do not read the Bible. Uh, they're choosing not to listen to the Word of God. And we think about that often people, uh, oh, praise the Lord. Uh, God gives me illustrations all the time. This afternoon, a birthday party at my house for Dan and some of his buddies came over. That was wonderful. And I came out there at one point and uh, there was a room full of chips. And I looked at those chips and I said, boy, those chips ought not be on the floor. And so I told one of my sons, I said, son, see those chips? Yes, dad, I see the chips. I said, pick up the chips and put them in the trash. And praise, that's good, right? Yeah, and, uh, you know, I came back a little bit later, and guess what was on the floor? Yes. Chips. And you think, uh, sometimes you ever notice that some people are there, but they're not there? <laughs> I'm here, but I'm not really here. And really, there's a problem with not listening. It's hard to obey God if you don't listen to God. I'm not God. I'm just saying in my household, it's hard for children to obey their parents if they don't listen to their parents, it's hard for us to obey God if we don't take the time to listen to God. But number three right here, how is it that you do not understand? I don't understand because I am simply confused. I'm simply confused. That's where the disciples were. They had made a mistake by not taking bread. Not really a big, big deal in God's eyes. God's going to take care of you. You make some mistakes like that. You don't bring bread. Hey, God will take care of you. He'll feed 4,000. He'll feed 5,000. He can turn water into wine. He can bring manna from above. God, God can take care of you. Amen. Amen. And so right here, that, that wasn't the problem. They just didn't understand. They begin to feel guilty. They begin to try to think of things. Boy, uh, guys, we forgot to bring bread. And the problem here, they just were confused. They were missing it because they were confused. I've been working on uh, reaching a man named Mike. And I've talked to him many times about the Lord. And uh, I went, uh, recently, about a week and a half ago, I got him to promise me that he would read this gospel track from uh, cover to cover to think about what it says. And sure enough, I saw him again. And I said, Mike, did you read it? He said, oh, yeah, I agree with everything in there. It's great. It's wonderful. And it, it led to a little bit more of a conversation. He began to say, uh, open up about how he is Catholic. And he began to open up with how Catholicism is exactly the same as what's on our gospel booklet. He was sincere, but he was confused. I, he's not a bad guy, a good guy, but he was very, very confused. So I really took time and I explained to him there's a big difference between Catholicism and being a Baptist. In a Baptist, we believe the Bible, and the Bible points to us to Jesus Christ being the only hope for heaven. But many people don't understand because they're simply confused. Now, what we should do, we should try our best to know God. 
to know what he wants from us. We don't want to be in any of these areas. Actually, we don't want to be in that place where we don't care. We don't want to be in the place where we don't listen. We don't want to be, do you understand where we're going with this? Amen. We're all in, in this area. God is speaking to you. He's speaking to me. Amen. Amen. He's speaking to us through the word. But I don't want to be at the point where I don't care. If you're in church, praise God, you're here because you care. You're in the right spot. But don't sit in church and not listen to the word of God. It makes no sense. Amen. Pay attention. Amen. But then also, uh, don't, don't remain in that confused state. It's okay to be confused, but try to work your way out of it. By the end of this, they figured it out. They accepted the rebuke of the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the very end of it, they, they said, Then understood they how that they bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of Pharisees. In other words, they figured out. That's where I want to be. I want to figure out what the Lord wants for me. I want to figure out what the Lord has for me. I want to figure out what the Lord desires for my life. Do you understand? It's a very simple sermon right there. But often we allow ourselves to be in that spot of not caring. We allow ourselves to be in that spot of, of not listening. And we say, it's okay, I just didn't hear it. It makes it okay. We allow ourselves sometimes to be in that spot of being confused. And then we say, I just can't figure it out. And therefore, we give ourselves a, a, a go where we can be confused and not worry about what the Lord wants from us. But the actual place we need to be is we can be confused, but let's figure it out. Let's go to the Lord and say, Lord, I acknowledge you in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. Go to the Lord and say, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not. And it shall be given him. Amen. And we want to be at a place where we know the will of God and we follow the will of God. Oh, it's so important. So important. Hey, listen. No, first, first, here's another thing, the application. Know what your job is. You know what your job is in the Christian life? You ever thought about this? What is your job in the Christian life? Well, to obey God. Well, not really. That's part of it. It's a result of it. Your job in, in the Christian life is to what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's to love him. It's to know him, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. And your job is to make God happy. It's to please Him. And because you want to make God happy, because you want to please Him, and you, you think about Him. I, I, Jesus said this about God. He says, for I do always those things that please Him. Your job is to please God. Can we agree with that? Amen. It's the application. Your job is to please. My, God, my job is to please God. I want to make God happy. I want to please Him. Amen? But how do you please God? How do you please God? Well, you got to pay attention to him. you got to figure out what he wants. You don't want him looking at and see, uh, saying, how is it that you do not understand? How is it that you, do not, you don't want to be sitting in that chair where I don't care, I didn't listen, I'm confused, and I don't care about figuring it out. That's not where you want to be. And so I, my job is to please him, please him. So determined to pay attention to God. Determined to pay attention to God. If God's speaking, determined, how can you pay attention? Read the Bible. Study the Bible. How can you pay attention to God? Pray and ask for wisdom. How can you pay attention to God? Study to show thyself approved unto God. How can you pay attention to God? That you, you pay attention. You can go to church. Amen. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Sunday school. Pay attention to God. Then this third one, how can you please him? Not only determine to pay attention, but be obedient. Be doers of the word, not hearers only. Uh, deceiving your own selves. And then... Here, here's the last part on it. Start over. Start over. In, in other words, uh, once you have pleased him, you, you, you desire to please him, he shows you what he wants you to do, and you do it, start over. Listen to him, try to please him again. It's not a difficult truth, but it's difficult for us sometimes. Sometimes we make excuses. We say, well, I just didn't hear. That's not a good excuse. Well, I just don't care. That's a really bad excuse. Well, I'm confused. What it is, it's just an excuse again. And we're accountable to God. One day we have to stand before the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we're going to have to give an account for our lives. But it's important for us, for you, for me to want to please Him. Have that desire. Please Him so much you listen to Him, you're obedient, you start over. My, by the way, I'm going to close with this. I was thinking about my daughter, sweet daughter, Anna Joy. I call her my sweet girl. And uh, I don't even know, she, where is she at here? Is she, how are you doing, my sweet girl? She is good. And she, she, I've been teaching her, her job is to make her daddy happy. Her job is to please her daddy. And praise God, she's my sweet girl. I was sitting in my office, and I needed coffee. I was out of coffee. 
And I gave her that look. I said, Anna Joy, could you get me some coffee? And sure enough, she uh, left and she smiled at me. She listened. She wanted to please me. She had that desire to please me, make me happy. She listened to what I had to say. She went in there and she made a pot of coffee. Praise the Lord. She then filled that cup, put sweetener in there. I used stevia, put a lot in there, a lot, brought it back to me, and she handed it to me with a smile. Do you think Daddy was happy? Man, was I happy. I took a sip of it, and I go, oh. oh. I said, next time, Anna Joy, use a little bit less sweetener. By the way, same day, I finished that cup of coffee, and there she was looking at me again. I said, Anna Joy, could you get more coffee with a little less sweetener? Okay, Daddy. She ran in there and got me another cup, did the exact same thing. And she came back. She, she wanted to please me, had a desire to please me. It wasn't a burden. It was a blessing for her to please me. She listened to me. And then she tried her best to do what I wanted her to do. When she got back, I am happy as can be. By the way, it goes a little bit further. She wants to please me. She went out thrift store shopping with you, Miss Marietta. Praise the Lord. You, Miss Nancy. And she got home from thrift store shopping. And you know what she, she did? She wanted to buy her daddy something. And she went and she found, she knows I like striped shirts, the ones I wear on like Wednesday. And so she bought me this striped shirt, and she showed it to me. She said, Dad, look what I got you. And she bought me a striped shirt, just a button-up shirt like that, smiling happy as can be. You know what? Pleases me. Amen. Makes me happy. She, she's trying to please me. She's trying to be mad. She's looking out for what I want from her. My, my son Sam this morning, he came and visited me. And I have some little dates in my, on my desk right there. And Sam came in there. He's up early. And he came over to me, smiling from ear to ear. Hey, Dad. And he looked in there, and he saw one of those dates. He said, Daddy, can I have one of those? I said, Sam, get you one. And I opened that up, and I, I gave him one. He took the biggest one. And I looked at him, and I said, Ooh, you got the big one, Sammy. And he goes, Yes, you did. You should have this one, Daddy. And he went and put it back, and he took a littler one right there. And listen, why? Because he wants to make me happy. He wants to please me. He's listening for ways that he can make me happy. And that's the way we should be with God. Hey, we don't want God. And if he does say that, how is it that you do not understand? And he says those words to us. Let's not ignore him. Let's try to figure out what he's trying to teach us and get us to do. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you.